Now I can't help but start this video out by saying, here we go again. Because once again, rumors and speculation are swirling that say Kathleen Kennedy will be fired and new leadership will be brought in at Lucasfilm for what feels like the umpteenth time at this point. And this is of course coming after Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is, barring a box office miracle, going to become an epic and costly failure or flop for Disney and Lucasfilm. How much so, you may wonder? Well, despite there being no precise way to measure it, short of actually being behind the scenes of it all and seeing all the numbers, like they will at Disney and Lucasfilm, numbers they will not be releasing, of course. Anyway, even with only one weekend under its belt, a weekend where it made roughly 60 million domestically, or here in the US, and another 70 million or so overseas, we can already make a pretty good approximation here. And that's done by first starting with the film's budget, which is reported to be around $300 million, adding in another roughly $100 million, if not more, for marketing, and then figuring the film will have to make somewhere in the ballpark of twice that combined number, or somewhere around $800 million, just to break even when you keep in mind that the theaters, of course, will take a cut of that revenue. And that cut is usually, or will be on average, around 50% when all is said and done. Though, it should be noted that these things are always negotiated between theater and studio, and with a big name like Indiana Jones, Disney will have leverage in those negotiations and will likely get a better end of that deal. Though, do keep in mind that theater cuts are usually kind of, shall we say, backloaded, meaning the studios generally take a larger cut from the first week than any other week, and slowly the theater's cut, as the weeks go by, will go up and up, done to encourage them to keep the film in the theater for longer, and by the end of the film's run, the theater may end up keeping somewhere around 80% of the box office take. And so, simply for the sake of argument here, we'll say the theaters are going to keep around half of the box office total, which again means Indy will need to gross around $800 million worldwide just to break even, and after this opening weekend's numbers, assuming Indy more or less holds to what the vast majority of films do, which is they make roughly one-third their total in that first weekend, we can then multiply that $130 million it made this past weekend by three and come up with around $390 million. And then after subtracting that from the $800 million, we're left with four hundred ten, and when we divide that by half, we come up with around $200 million, which is what Disney stands to lose here. And again, keep in mind, that's a rough approximation. Not all the numbers are set in stone or precisely known, like marketing, for example, that could in theory be much higher than 100 million. And we don't know how the film will perform in coming weeks exactly. It could have legs, it could have good word of mouth, for example, and make more than expected, or it could see steep drop-offs and not even hit that 390 million mark. Either way, again, barring something pretty miraculous happening, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is not only going to lose Disney a lot of money, but it will also permanently shut the door on the franchise. Though it should be noted that in Disney's initial valuation of Lucasfilm 10 years ago, right before they purchased, Indiana Jones wasn't even factored into it. It was almost entirely based off the value of Star Wars. In other words, Disney sure as hell didn't buy Lucasfilm for Indiana Jones, though I'm sure they would have still been okay with Indy making them a bit of money. In fact, that's probably what Kathleen Kennedy promised them it would do. And keep in mind, the creation of this movie of The Dial of Destiny was the idea and was pushed by Kathleen Kennedy herself. But not only was this her idea, but she was of course heavily involved in the creation of this film, every step of the way, the creation of a movie that will lose them again somewhere around 200 million at a time when Disney is not doing all that well to begin with, when they're on a string of failed films that is tallying up around to be one billion dollars at this point. And so we have to go back to the question I essentially posed at the beginning. Will this mean changes at Lucasfilm? Will Kathleen Kennedy be fired? And my guess is that no, she won't be, which I know is not the answer that many of you watching this video now want to hear. And of course, you're free to disagree with me and I do hope that I end up being wrong. But at this point, I don't think she's going anywhere or leaving until she decides she wants to step down, which could be, and in theory should be, sometime in the relative near future here, when you consider she is now 70 years old. And this is by no means to say that you can't absolutely make an argument that she should be fired. I think even leaving Indiana Jones as well as Willow out of this, the state of Star Wars on the film front is case enough to get her fired. And I'm not just talking about Solo losing money at the box office and getting diminishing returns from the sequels that each subsequent film in the trilogy made less than the previous one. I'm talking about the failure to get films made in the first place and the constant hiring and firing we see when it comes to writers and directors. 
I mean, there's absolutely no way Disney envisioned there'd be a seven-year gap in between film releases, much less one of any kind coming on the heels of the conclusion of the sequel trilogy, which was supposed to propel Star Wars into a new age, if you will. Not to mention a long gap less than a decade into owning the franchise. You know in their minds Star Wars was supposed to be just like Marvel. It was supposed to put out at least one film a year and every so often culminate into a larger film, their own kind of Avenger style film, where huge mega success would be had at the box office. That was absolutely what they had in mind when they purchased this franchise or when they purchased a Lucasfilm for this franchise. And yet here we are in the middle of a seven year gap between films, and that's assuming the two films announced for 2026 will actually get made, or at least one of them will get made. And many believe one of those intended films will be the Rey film, and the other will be the James Mangold Dawn of the Jedi film. Which I'm not so sure about that one anymore overall, not after Mangold's Indiana Jones film could lose Disney around 200 million. Good chance that film either gets scrapped altogether, or we'll see someone else brought in to create it. Again, assuming it ever gets made, which is never a given with modern-day Lucasfilm and making films. Just to look at Rogue Squadron, that looked like it was a sure thing after they even gave a little promo with Patty Jenkins when announcing it, yet it's been postponed indefinitely since. Anyway, after once again here making a case against Kathleen Kennedy keeping her job, you might be wondering why I don't think she'll get fired. And well, actually, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's not only far from the first time I've ever made a case against her, but that many, a great many, have been calling for her to be fired for years now, pretty much ever since The Last Jedi. And of course, no matter what kind of argument you make against her, no matter how logical and factual you try to keep it, though I'm not saying all arguments against her have been factual and logical or completely rational, but no matter how hard you try to accomplish those things, you'll almost certainly be labeled a hater, that you must be nothing short of a bigoted troll to in any way question the legacy of Kathleen Kennedy, or call for her firing today. I see it brought up all the time on social media by people who want to defend her. They'll show this list of films she was a producer on, or in some way a part of, as if that's all the proof you'll ever need of her individual greatness, ignoring the fact that others attached to those projects may have had a little more to do with their success than her. And so perhaps the problems Lucasfilm has experienced this past decade under her leadership, and absent some of those great names on those other films, is more indicative of her true skill or qualifications to run the company. But again, to in any way even suggest something like that, to dare call her ability into question, must mean you hate all women or something like that and can't stand the thought of them having anything to do in relation to Star Wars, which is why Disney will not fire her. They don't want to be seen as giving into that crowd. They don't want to be seen as giving into the trolls and then the repercussions that will no doubt follow, even though, yeah, they could literally open up the books, point at the numbers, and say she is losing us money. They could literally turn Lucasfilm around and start to, you know, profit off of it if they had the right person in place. But none of that will matter to many people out there. And again, I hope I'm dead wrong with all of this. I'd like to see new leadership at Lucasfilm, but I just don't see anything that will make Disney finally do it, all things considered. I don't think they'll fire her. I think to get political for a moment here... The haters of Kennedy and Disney Star Wars are just automatically associated with the right. And considering the problems Disney is having down in Florida legally right now and with a certain governor, I don't think they want to be seen as giving into that side and alienating the side that supports them. I think it's pretty much as simple as that no matter how much money keeping Kennedy in place may cost to them. So again, I think she's there as long as she wants to be, and Disney is probably fearing the day she does go because, of course, there will be conspiracies immediately coming out that she's being forced out, that this isn't her choice, and they'll probably end up losing that way anyway. They'll probably end up getting some sort of backlash because of people making theories that she's being forced out. And so really, she's become like this lose-lose situation for Disney. She's taken Lucasfilm into the ground, but they can't fire her and bring in someone who could potentially turn the company around. And even if she does retire in the near future, it'll allow that side to celebrate and claim victory. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about all this. Do you think this is it for Kennedy? Will she be fired after the failure of Dial of Destiny? Or is she not going anywhere anytime soon? Whatever you do think, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.